Hi, I'm Akshom, and there is another presentation with a very long title, but first a little remark about the name of the tool, MRM. As you have said about this game, I played this very hard and I got really metaphorically drunk because I was trying to choose a short name that it would be easier to type in the terminal many times and I couldn't find anything. So that's why I found this name. It a short version of Marmot. It doesn't really mean anything, no connection to what tool does, just a fun name and short. And relates to you as well. So this is how many open source projects look. You have uh, the source code here, maybe one line in this file. There are many packages like this. You have uh, tests here, and you have documentation here. And oh, basically, this is your project. And all the rest is files that supporting your development process. That is a license, contribution guidelines, but most of these files are just configuration of your tooling. ESLint RC, Pretty RC, uh, whatever else RC. There are many, 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 many of these files. I've compiled this list in just five minutes browsing several popular projects. These are all real names. Yes, mostly tooling configuration. <laughs> At this time, you may ask, isn't this too much? And I would say, yes, but it's not the end yet. Most likely you want to maintain many projects. And you will have all these RC files in each of them. And you want to, you want this RC files to be up to date and synchronized between all your projects to have similar development experience in each. For example, not, not yet. Uh, for example, the git ignore file. Uh, it will contain things like not uh, modules, uh, editor artifacts, operating system artifacts, all the files you don't want your user to commit. And you want to have this the same in all your projects. But at the same time, you may have some uh, pro project customization to this file. So most of support files are very close to each other, but in some projects, you want to have some customizations. And this is the problem. There are tools that based on templates like Yomen. They are great for creating new projects. They could create many, many files in one second. But when you want to update, template-based tools will just replace all your configuration with the new version and you will lose your customizations. So we need a tool that works like code mods, which means it is a script that describes how your configuration file should look. And the script can create a new file or it can update a new file, file to a new version by maintaining your customizations. And that's why I created MRM. Let's start from a couple of examples, what it can do. The first is git ignore. You can run this command right now. If you don't know what npm is, npx is. It's a tool created by npm uh, team, and it will run this package without installation. It will fetch it from npm, fetch the latest version, run it, and give it a cache probably. So next time it will be faster. But you don't have to type uh, it's down low, and uh, if it's a tool that you do not use very often, by using NPX, you will have the latest version every time. You don't need to update it. Of course, it's a bit slower, but for many tools, it's very convenient. 
and here is the result. So let me try to refresh it. Yes, it's bigger. So this command, this project already had bit ignore. It had some custom. It had something that Emerson kept it, but added some lines that you want to have in all your projects. Another simple example is the license task. Also, you can use this command to run it. It works very close. Also created a license file. Uh, you can change the name if you want. But interesting thing about that, uh, Emerald tries to make integration as simple as possible. It tries to infer Infer configuration either from budget or from your environment. In this case, we will try to read name and URL from either the configuration or npm configuration. In npm, you have a command uh, npm init that will create a package and you can define this kind of things in npm configuration and then the MRM will read this value so you don't have to configure it separately. And the next example, the last one, it's probably the most complicated task we have now. It adds jest to your projects, project. And it does a lot of things. This is just a portion of the list. It will create several internal scripts to run jest, to run just in watch mode, to create coverage report. It will have configuration packages on in case it's needed. It will update uh, get ignore and PM ignore easily to ignore with some common patterns. It will install Jest, of course, from NPM and add it to packages on as a dependency. It will install Babel Jest if your project depends on Babel. It will install ES Jest if your project depends on TypeScript. It will install Enzyme if your project depends on React. That's why I'm talking about this on React Meetup. It will also try to get rid of all the testing frameworks you may use. So you don't want to, you don't need to remove them manually. And it also will suggest you to use just code mods to migrate to just from whatever you used to use. This is how it will look in terminal. The base creates some file, uninstalls all frameworks, installs new dependencies, and yeah. You can then run code mods. And basically, you can migrate to chest in 10 seconds if you don't use any special tools, any special mock up plugins, stuff like that. Because this tool is also really great. So, MRM adds all dependencies you need, and then you run just code mods and migrate your tests. And this is the result. Several new files and updates and uh, packages on, so you can see that Emory replaced Mocha with uh, Jest. And there are yeah, there are several new scripts around Jest and different mods. So a little bit. Uh, Let's take a look at what features make MRM good, in my opinion. We've seen some of them already, but there is a short summary. We have a bunch of default tasks that you can just use. Several of them we've seen right now. There are also pretty here, and the token heap, created as and many others. They're not very flexible yet, but they work. MRM has minimal configuration, as I described before. It will try to infer as much configuration as possible from either your project or your environment. It also tries to keep changes minimal. It will try to keep files formatting. It will try to keep comments in JSON, things like that. So you will not see huge diffs if you update something will not break your spaces, will not replace them with stops like uh, template-based tools would most likely do. 
Of course, there is some configuration. Most, time, most of the time, you don't need it, but if you want to change something like in the license test, you can change the name of the license. I guess you should not call it a release, but yeah. As an example, it would work. And or you can create a configuration file and store everything in this file. You can share tasks on NPM. You can publish one task. Or you can publish a preset, with, which is a bunch of tasks with a configuration. And then you can create a preset for your project or configurate for, for your organization. And all your colleagues will have access to the same tools. And the most powerful feature of MRM, of course, you can create your own tasks. Uh, there is a special library, MRM Core, that contains APIs to work with. Most popular configuration files like JSON, YAML, VD, or ULAN separated text files. I don't know if there is a name for such things. It's like git ignore where you have many, many lines. I call them ULAN separated text files because I couldn't find any common name. Uh, there are APIs to install and install dependencies, uh, APIs to work with files, like create folders, copy files, stuff like that. Also APIs to work with editor config. Uh, for example, you can ask uh, what style has a particular file, and it will try to read your editor config configuration and tell you. But this is how the simplest test look, the import uh, lines method from MRM core lines is a method that works with so the line separated file. We try to create if it's not a file, if it is, if not one file, it will just create a new name or update with new file with the new lines that we have here in this line. The real get ignore test is more complicated than this, but it's a simplified version. Here you can read configuration from command line or from config file. You can set default values. You can require particular options. This is an example of working with JSON file. Also, there is a method JSON to read a file. You update some data in this file. You save changes. This will save or create file. Special case JSON file, who package JSON files, which is based on JSON but has separate tasks, uh, separate methods to work with uh, NPM script, which often very useful when you update uh, package JSON. There are several, several other APIs to work with uh, other configuration formats that looks very similar to this one. NPM dependencies also build a list of stuff we want to install, make some query to existing configuration. For example, we have label coring dependencies and another package and then just this will run uh, NPM install. So you will have your packages and also it will update packages on. And there is Many more methods in the core. This is this is how I feel every time I use MRM. <laughs> Makes me happy, more productive. I don't want to do that anymore. So thank you and how to make your configs. These are the tool itself, slides, and you can find me. In the internet and here. Thank you.